what I wanted to do was give you a little history of where lasagna originated. So it originally came from um, ancient Greece. And when the Romans invaded ancient Greece, the original word for what they, what the Romans found in Greece was a dish called laganon. And it was actually strips of flat bread uh, that was wound around in a stick. And so they sprinkled things, uh, toppings on it and then fired it in, the, um, in, their, in their ovens. When the Romans came over uh, from Greece, they loved the taste of that. And so they actually turned their pasta and rolled it on to, um, into a pan and, and learned to put topping, uh, their toppings in their country and then fired it in their ovens. And so from uh, the original Greek word of laganon, it turned into lagania. And then of course, with reiterations, it is the word that we know of today, lasagna. But in the 14th century, Naples, um, in the lower south end of Italy, um, they actually made it for, for special occasions. And of course, the rich Italian families only had access to that. Um, when in, in, in like the 19th century, Bologna took that idea and they incorporated the Bolognese, Bolognese sauce and made the lasagna that uh, we see in many of the restaurants. So I'm going to start cooking and then I'll lick, um, I'll have a, a little, a little blurb about the history of pumpkins later on. So let's get started. Uh, I am going to, let's see, the, the recipe starts with uh, getting all the ingredients, which I gave Suzanne. Uh, so what we're going to do is take olive oil. I'm going to saute the onions, the garlic. Wait, I'm going to saute the sage first. Remove the sage, then saute the garlic and the onions, and then the... Um, the protein. Now the protein, if you don't want to have a vegetarian version, you can eat, use ground turkey, or you can use many plant-based um, ground products that are now currently at Trader Joe's and Sprouts. So, so let's start with that. Okay, I'm just Warming, warming my uh, my stove, which is my 1952 stove, and I'm sure all of you have seen this before in the other demo that I did on PF Chang. So the, these are my oop, right there. Those are my sage leaves from my garden, and I'm going to crisp that up in the olive oil. I need to get a little bit of time. So pumpkin lasagna is, is a, kind of a modern version of all the different kinds of lasagnas that we see right now. And now there's like Mexican lasagna and um, mushroom lasagna to, to name a few. I think that is ready. So I hope everyone is doing well, and I hope I want to encourage all of you to join our RA activities on the website that Suzanne uh, later uh, earlier talked about. Please join us on Urban Walks. Um, it is led by just fantastic people, and uh, we would love to have you come to our luncheons as well. And, and please sign in on all the lectures that we have offered. And Matt Xavier's got a ukulele class too. All right, I believe this is getting warm now. Okay, let's see. Now. So the sage leaves don't need to stay in the pan very long. You just want to crisp it up 
get the essence of the sage oil into the olive oil. While that's crisping up, I've got um, my chopped onions and my garlic. And so it's uh, half an onion and two to four cloves of garlic. However, if you like more garlic, then go to four. If you don't, if you kind of shy of garlic, then go down to two cloves. Donna, can you can you smell the, the sage? Yum. Oh. We have another guest here today who um, is going to partake in our lunch, and that's Shirley Higgins. And so she's going to be over here drooling too, right with me. <laughs> So that's what the sage looks like when it's all crisped up. Um, and, and sage is used in a lot of dishes like brown, butter, sage, pasta. Um, so really sage is a very, very popular herb uh, that's gonna be used during the fall season. Um, people use sage to put in their, in their dressing for Thanksgiving. Um, so anyway, that's what it looks like after it's all browned up. So what I'm doing right now is sauteing the onion and the garlic. And doing the sage first really makes the, the dish very fragrant and, and very folly. So this is uh, the time where if you want to use ground turkey, you can put it in, but make sure that you really get it nice and crumbly. Um, this is Trader Joe's uh, beef plant uh, substitute. So it looks like ground beef. Oh, I knew I would get, I'll be right back. Right, I'm back. Donna, uh, are you on Gail's computer or, or not? You're using something else. We're using Gail's iPad. Um, I let Gail, I'm not finding i'm looking all over through my um emails and i'm not seeing the recipes <laughs> we can send them afterward unless you can direct donna to where that you can find those and shoot those over oh, to me um i'll send it i thought i sent it to you earlier a couple of weeks ago yeah well, i'm not seeing them is what i'm saying so um, all right i'll send them yeah Thanks. so uh, let me get the um recipe out and donna can go ingredients right now. So the um, ingredients starting at the top are one box of no-bake lasagna sheets, a ah, demo, <laughs> a 29 ounce can of pumpkin puree, and then those lovely fresh sage leaves you just saw, one small container of ricotta, uh, one to two cups of white cheddar cheese, chicken bouillon cubes, and then or, the or vegetarian bouillon, which is, um, this is the product I use, better than bouillon. They have a chicken flavored one 
and they have a beef flavored one and then they have a veg vegetable flavored one. And then Dale talked about the alternatives for whether you wanted vegetarian or not, turkey or veggie burger. Uh, a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, olive oil, two to three to four cloves of garlic that are minced, half an onion chopped, and later on we'll see a third of a cup of heavy cream. Sounds awesome. <laughs> All right, so this is browning right now. You can actually put in um, a dark leafy green. I chose beet, beet leaf greens because that's what's growing in my garden, but you can use spinach or you can use um, Swiss chard. And I would say this is about a cup. I'm one of the cooks that don't measure. <laughs> cup, cup and a half. So while that's sauteing, let me get back to a little bit of history of, of the pumpkin. Oop. So the pumpkin comes from a Greek word called uh, pepon, P-E-P-O-N, and it means a large melon. Um, and through many years, it reiterated to the English version of pumpkin as we know it. But the oldest pumpkin seeds were found in the Oaxaca region of Mexico, dated about 7,500 years ago. So the, the, the Native Americans and, and the, the, the Incas, and they probably worked with a lot of squashes in addition to pumpkin. Uh, so anyway, that's where they found the pumpkin seeds there. So it, it, the pumpkin itself has, is a, has existed in their culture for, you know, 7,500 years. That's a long time. The Native Americans incorporated pumpkins. Uh, they would cut it into strips and then they would roast them over the, the fires. When the colonists came over, they saw that and they thought, oh, why don't we hollow out the whole pumpkin? And they put milk, and they put um, spices and honey. And that was an early version of the pumpkin pie that we know of today. Um, so they took that and they roasted it over an open fire. Um, but nutrition wise, the pumpkin is really packed with a lot of wonderful, healthy uh, uh, nutrients. And one of them is the beta carotene and it's an antioxidant. And uh, for every cup of cooked pumpkin, it only yields 49 calories. So if you're a Weight Watchers and you're counting points and calories, that's hardly anything. Okay, I better watch this while I'm talking to you. Okay, so I'm just uh, sauteing it up. And now, now I'm going to add in my uh, pumpkin puree. I've got two 15 ounce cans. Give that a good stir. I mean, 
if you're really ambitious, you could roast a pumpkin, carve it out, and puree a pumpkin. But the canned pumpkin, canned pureed pumpkin is so much easier. Okay, so let me hold it up. So that's what it currently looks like. To that, I'm gonna add uh, a fourth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. So that's about a fourth of a teaspoon, done. Then I have this spice hanging around. It's called poultry seasoning. And I know it's not in the recipe, but because I have it, I'm just going to add it in. I'm going to put about a teaspoon in. And then last but not least, oops. Uh, last but not least, I'm going to add the bouillon now. So it was one teaspoon. So there is half a teaspoon. Gonna give that a good stir and it's really bubbling nicely. Get that all mixed in, get the spices incorporated in. Because the bouillon has salt, I don't add any salt. Um, you can add pepper, uh, just do a couple of um, uh, twists of, of ground fresh pepper. Okay. See, and this is your sauce. See how fast that came together? It came together pretty quickly. I'm gonna let that heat up. So let me get back to the pumpkins. So I told you the word pumpkin came from ancient Greek called pepon, meaning large melon. Um, we talked about the Native Americans incorporating pumpkin into their diet, and you should incorporate pumpkin into your diet too. Uh, one thing about choosing a pumpkin, choose some, a pumpkin, um, usually people cook with uh, what are the, uh, they call it, the, the pumpkin pie pumpkin, and it's not it's a little bit more sweet um, and people like to bake that. But I wanna show you different kinds of pumpkins that, that I have right here. Um, pumpkins vary in color. Some are blue, some are green, uh, some are white, some have stripes. Uh, the light and dark green pumpkins, they're, they're grown in China. And if you go to the Chinese or um, grocery store, or if you go to Zion, you'll see a, a squash called the kabocha pumpkin. And that is really delicious. It's about, it's about this big, it's, it's, it's dark green. It's got a very hard exterior, but uh, I've used that, I've roasted it, and then I've made um, 
a version of butternut squash soup with that. Um, the bright orange is the one that we typically see. Um, blue pumpkins are in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, and I want to note specialty produce. They listed 24 varieties of pumpkins. So, but it, they don't have 24 in stock. So I looked last night to see what they have in stock and they have a Cinderella pumpkin. And that is kind of shaped like the Cinderella carriage. Um, so I think it's about that, but it's more flatter on top. Uh, so they have the Cinderella pumpkin currently in stock. They have the fairy tale pumpkin uh, and it's a little bit smaller um, than the traditional pumpkin. And then they have the white pumpkin, they have mini pumpkins, and then they have the tiger stripe. So here is a mini pumpkin, and I got this at Trader Joe's. Here is a white pumpkin, and I love the stem on this, that's why I picked this one. And then last but not least, here is the tiger stripe. So aren't they just beautiful? Oh, uh, let's see. Okay. Okay, I think this is heating up really nicely. All right, I'm gonna shut off the heat and then I'm gonna pour it in the heavy cream. Again, I told you I don't measure. So third of a cup, half a cup. So I did turn off the heat before I added the heavy cream. So now I'm giving it a good stir and getting that nice cream into the sauce. So Gail, is the flavor profile of this dish more akin to a pumpkin pie than it is to a lasagna? No, no, I'm going to show you that I'm going to use lasagna noodles to layer it with the right, sauce. Right, lasagna noodles, but it's not going to have that tomato-y. No um, tomatoes. Yeah. No tomatoes. We're, we're strictly using fall ingredients to make this. So this is a really good alternative. If you are a vegetarian um, and you wanted to make this dish for Thanksgiving, it would be a really nice dish to have. And it would be a good side dish too uh, for Thanksgiving. You know, you, you can make it the night before and then put it in the refrigerator and then take it out and bake it. Are, are there any more questions? Donna, can you see if there's any questions? Are there any questions? If you want to post them in the chat or um, unmute yourself. It has a delicious savory smell. <laughs> they're gonna let the they're gonna let the peanut gallery speak for just a sec. The kitchen has a delicious savory smell. It really does smell like a casserole. And even though it's veggie, it does smell like meat here. I just love that you guys have a party going on there. You get to <laughs> 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 yeah. so, Another thing I thought of, and that is that uh, this would be an awesome dish for someone who might be allergic to tomatoes. Or Gus yeah. really doesn't like tomatoes, and they probably stay away from lasagna because they think it's got tomatoes. Mm -hmm. So this would be a great alternative. So all I did was um, coat my lasagna pan with olive oil. And let me hold up the sauce. Okay, so that's what the sauce looks like. All right, so layering it is no different than layering your standard lasagna.
Uh, I've got my uh, white cheddar cheese. So it's about, if you like cheese, then go two to three cups. Um, so I just shredded a small container of that. And you can use Fontina if you want. You can use mozzarella if you want. So you don't really need to stick to um, cheddar. So this is white cheddar that I got at Costco. Uh, your old standard uh, tub of ricotta. And then uh, I know I didn't put in on the recipe, but this is a Parmesan cheese to sprinkle on top. So I'm gonna start layering the lasagna. Okay, so let's see. Okay, small kitchen. <laughs> Okay, all right, I'm going to put a dollop of sauce on the bottom. And all I'm doing is spreading the sauce so the noodles don't stick to the bottom. And that's what that looks like. And I am going to start layering the noodles. So I know three fit on the bottom here on my pan. So one, two, three. So the layering goes sauce, just like you would do with the regular tomato-based lasagna, sauce, ricotta, and cheese. So here we go. So sauce, and then I just take a spoonful and spread it over the noodles. I'm sure to get that band out of the oven. Yeah, it's 45 minutes. Is it 45 minutes? Oh, yes. it needs to, um, the top just needs to come off. It's to come on. Excuse me. Have one baking in the oven right now. I know the magic of television. And then here I'm going to dollop the ricotta. So one, two. I love it. You've got a Donna for an alarm instead of Google. I usually I, Google. Yeah. <laughs> that was Shirley. That was Shirley. <laughs> I love it. Okay. And then I'm going to sprinkle the cheddar cheese. Okay, the noodles, squish, squish, squish. And then sauce. I think you can create your own kind of lasagna. Um, you don't need to follow the traditional way of using the sauces that the Italians have. I think it's kind of fun to just try different flavors. I am definitely inspired by this. <laughs> are, are you? Yeah. But you know, in terms of salt and you know, you can use low fat ricotta if you want. You don't even need to add the cheese. Um, you can totally make this uh, uh, 
um, not not gluten free, but um, vegan by limit, substituting it with all the vegan kind of cheeses that they have. Okay, so squish. So I just finished, I just am putting, I'm on layer three of the noodles. And I think I got enough sauce to do one more final layer. Um, what I try to do is make, make the sauce be the top layer. One, two. Here I'm topping it with ricotta. Okay, I'm just saving a little bit to go on the top. I think one box will be enough to make one lasagna. You'll have some noodles left over. So I, I put four layers of lasagna noodles and this is gonna be my final, my final layer. Well, I'm going to admit to something really dumb. I made lasagna a long, long time ago, and I always thought you had to cook the lasagna noodles a little bit before. No. It makes no, it if you so want to, to show the good. package again, I just buy no bake lasagna. Um, just make sure that the sauce is covered up, and I'll hold this up so you can see that. No boil. Ugh, no boil. So there, that's what it looks like. This is the no boil lasagna from Trader Joe's that Gail had. So it's no wow. boil, no boil beforehand. No, nope, just I just laid it directly into the that pan. That makes it so much easier. It makes it so much easier. Barella has uh, one that's no bake. So it's easy to find now. Um, but you know, I'm a, I'm a Trader Joe's fan, so. Okay, so I use the last of my ricotta. Oh, oh, here comes this, I almost forgot. I'm gonna sprinkle the sage leaves over it. <laughs> There's a really funny comment in the chat. Uh, oh, what you does it say, Susan? You don't measure things when you're cooking. So one of our smart allergy members says, do you measure things when filling prescriptions? <laughs> <laughs> She's out of that business now. I'm retired. Yeah, I don't know. But when it comes to measuring, like I love baking bread and I have a food scale. So uh, be sure that I did double check everything that I did. And so does every single pharmacist in the hospital and retail. So <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> okay. Um, but now you're free, I you know. don't have to measure. <laughs> so I ran out of cheese, but I am gonna grade some more later on. So that's what it looks like. That's what it looks like. And then I'm going to sprinkle um, some uh, Parmesan. Okay. So, um, Cover it with aluminum foil. 
preheat your oven at 375 degrees. Uh, put it in the oven with the foil on top for 45 minutes. I usually preheat my oven for a half an hour. And then uh, after 45 minutes is up, Shirley reminded me to uh, take, take the foil off so that the cheese can brown in the last 15 minutes. So it is about one hour in the oven. But you know what? You can use that to roast vegetables as well. Um, so, so anyway, let's see. So this will get covered up. And then this can just go right into the refrigerator without baking it or just directly into the oven. 